Hello, I'm Dr. Christian Dunn, a senior lecturer in the School of Natural Sciences at Bangor University. And I want to talk to you about one of the most topical, probably one of the most discussed, and potentially even one of the most researched areas of science in the past couple of years, and that is plastic pollution or plastic waste. That 300 million tonnes of plastic which we throw away every single year. That's the equivalent of the weight of the entire human population just thrown away every single year. And I probably actually don't need to tell you about the scale of the problem, but also what the damage it is doing, because many of you will have seen that footage from David Attenborough and other media organisations looking at this plastic pollution. You'll have seen the stomachs of seabirds cut open to be full of plastic. You will have seen those floating islands of plastic waste on our ocean and many other disturbing images. So at Bangor University, we are doing our bit to look at the state of the problem. And one thing in particular that we are looking at is the hidden, the secret side of that plastic waste problem, and that is microplastics, tiny pieces of plastic, five millimeters or less. That's about the size of a grain of rice and even smaller. And we're looking at what that, pro that, what that problems of microplastic could be and where those microplastics are. And in fact, we were one of the first universities to look at this problem in UK inland waters. So a couple of years ago, in these very labs, we did a research project where we had samples sent to us from all over the UK, from rivers and locks and lakes, from the River Thames, right up to remote locks in Scotland. We analysed them here, we developed a new method and we looked at microplastics, looked at those samples to find microplastics. And we found microplastics in all of them, from the River Thames right up to those remote locks. But crucially, and interestingly for you guys, that research project was done by students. It, we, I had undergraduate and postgraduate students working on that research project and it hit the national news hugely. It was in all the national newspapers, BBC, Sky, all the broadcasters in the UK and around the world. It was the first time anyone had looked at microplastics in fresh waters and we found them everywhere, which is quite, quite worrying. But it was done by students. But what do I mean by microplastics? Where are these microplastics coming from? Well, there are two types, really, of microplastics. There's what's called the primary microplastics. And these are the pieces of plastic which are actually produced to be that small, that five millimeters or less. And they're produced for that reason in terms of plastic nurdles. So that's the raw or virgin type of plastic, which then gets melted down to make everything else that is plastic. There's also, unfortunately, those microbeads, which used to be, and unfortunately still are, made in cosmetics, so exfoliating type particles. So those are the, the ones, the primary sources, they're the ones that are made to be that small. But worryingly, absolutely everything that is made of plastic will release, will break up eventually into smaller pieces of plastics and eventually microplastics. Um, and this is the real concern. In fact, two of the biggest producers of microplastics are clothing. So much of our clothing is made of plastics, different types of plastics. And if you put an average washing machine load on, um, that will actually be releasing something around, around about 700,000 pieces of plastic. The other big source that we have found is car tire wear. So we might think car tires are made of rubber, but they're not, they're made of plastic. And across, the, across Europe, around about half a million tons of car tire fragments, microplastics, are produced every single year. That is an incredible amount of microplastics. And where does it end up? Well, that's, that's what we're looking at. And for the first time, we found that microplastics were in our fresh waters. And then, obviously, we know that they are in our seas and our oceans, but they're getting there from the land, from the rivers, from the locks. They're all ending up in our seas and our oceans, which is something that we have to be concerned about. Which is why at Bangor University we continue to do work on this and we also set up the Plastic Research Centre of Wales to bring together all the different researchers at Bangor University who are looking at different angles of the plastic waste problem. So we have 
people like myself who are doing microplastic analysis in waterways. We also have people who are interested in plastics, how they're, um, how they're, how they're expressed by the media, the legal side of using plastics, and also the psychological side of using and um, buying plastic products. So we have a huge range of different researchers at Bangor University, all looking at plastic in different ways. We've brought them all together in the Plastic Research Centre of Wales. We also have some kind of high profile projects going on. So we have the Centre for Environmental Biotechnology here, um, and they are looking at microplastics acting as vectors or homes to microorganisms, particularly harmful ones, because we've spoken about the problems of microplastics, but we don't actually know yet the problems that these microplastics could be having on the environment, on ecosystems, on whole organisms, and indeed our own health. But we do know some things. We do know that plastics of all types can leach harmful chemicals, and they can also act as vectors or homes for microbes, for bacteria, for viruses, which can be harmful. So we want to know that there are all these microplastics floating around in our waters, even in our air. If you take in a deep breath now, guarantee you've just inhaled some microplastics. So we know that microplastics are everywhere. We don't yet know the full consequences of those microplastics, but we need to find out. And that's one of the projects which we are doing at Bangor University. We're also looking at the effects of microplastics on soil health. So can it affect the fertility of our soil? Is the fact that we have all these bits of plastic floating around in us, is that going to start to affect our, our entire kind of our eating, our food, and the production of our food? We also want to know how uh, microplastics move around the, the planet, move around the environment, like a, the plastic cycle. Uh, one of the projects we're doing there is looking at the mangroves in the Philippines, how the mangroves act as filters, producers, trappers, or what do they do when it comes to microplastics? There's so many questions out there about this. It's a very exciting time to get involved in microplastic research. And crucially, as a student, you can get involved in microplastic research when you come to Bangor University. And in fact, one of the projects which you may get involved in is um, with me, which is one of our citizen science projects which we are doing, because we want to map out the entire UK's inland waters and coastal, inland coastal waters as well, in terms of how many microplastics are there out there. Um, so what we've done is I've teamed up um, with a professional wild swimmer called Laura Sanderson, and uh, what we're doing is we are getting samples sent to us from all over the country um, uh, and sent to it here at Bang University, which we will then analyse for microplastics. And we're getting them sent to us in a rather unusual way um, because this is a citizen science project. So we had to make it so that anyone um, could get involved um, uh, without any kind of expensive equipment or anything like that. So what we came up with, uh, the best way for people to send us samples is actually in wine bottles, screw, tack, screw cap wine bottles. So people um, have the uh, enjoyment uh, of drinking the wine and then going out and collecting this water from wherever they live um, in these wine bottles, tightening them up, um, the caps on, and then sending them to us. And then my students here in these very labs um, will be running uh, these samples through various uh, filters and then looking at them on the microscopes to actually count the amounts of microplastics that's in these waters. And it is um, a little bit worrying because this looks nice and clean and neat and pure um, and almost like you could drink it. But it will be, not full, but it will have some microplastics in it. There are microplastics in every water sample which we've ever um, sampled. There's, water, there's microplastics in the air around us. There are microplastics everywhere. So we need to find out where the sources are. Are there hot spots of microplastics? Because, as I mentioned before, we don't yet know the full consequences, health-wise, um, ecological-wise, of these microplastics. There is evidence coming out to show that they are and can have detrimental effects for various um, organisms and various ecosystems, but we haven't got the full pitch yet, we, by any means. But what we, what we need to know now is where these microplastic hotspots are, so that if, when we find out the damage that these microplastics could be causing, we'll at least have a baseline, we'll at least have some evidence of where they are, so that then we can start to do something about it.
What can we do about it is another question. And again, one that we are trying to address already at Bangor University. So um, CAB, the Centre for Environmental Biotechnology, are looking at different types of enzymes involved in degradation of plastics, as well as other universities as well. And also in these labs here, in fact, you can kind of see some of them just over, over there. Um, we're looking at whether we can build constructed treatment wetlands, um, so reed beds, um, to remove microplastics from waterways. Um, we use constructed treatment wetlands or reed beds to remove a whole range of different pollutants already. Human waste, industrial waste, agricultural waste, because wetlands have this amazing ability, reed beds have this ability to remove um, pollutants. They have fantastic relationships between the water, the microbes, the soil, the plants, all acting together to break down and remove plastics, uh, or remove pollutants. Now, they won't be able to break down microplastics, but what we could do is build wetlands so they can trap microplastics and hold them in one place, so that at least then we can clean our waterways of these microplastics and have them concentrated in one space. What we then do with them is another research project which you perhaps you could get involved in. There are so many questions about plastic pollution um, that need addressing the matter of urgency because what we don't want is for plastics, microplastics, to be like ooh, the asbestos of the 21st century or the tobacco of the 21st century. A product which, when it first came out, we thought was brilliant and it was great, like lead. We used lead for everything. And then we found out, well, actually, we've got quite a few health problems here. We can't, we, if plastic turns out like that, we need to be ahead of the game um, already. We need, to be, we need to be hitting the ground running if we find that there is a problem in terms of health um, for these plastics, these microplastics. So that's some of the work that we are doing at Bangor University. Um, plenty of work for you guys to be doing should you come to Bangor University and get involved with some of these research projects. And some of our students, um, uh, who, some of the guys that were involved um, with the original microplastic work have gone on to do PhDs in the field. Um, as many of our students do, they go off to do their doctorate, kind of continue their studies. But other students um, go off to do a huge range of different um, project, um, um, careers. Some get into further research, working for commercial laboratories. Some get into the, the media. So we have one student uh, recently, Hamza Yassin, who is a presenter for CBeebies. You may have seen him. He also did a, a, a documentary on Channel 4 um, the other week as well about his life as a cameraman in Scotland. But we also have students that go and work in, in, in medicine, um, in veterinary, in all sorts of different careers. A, a solid grounding in biology or zoology at Bangor University can set you up for a huge range of different careers. And on top of that, you will be researching and studying in our most spectacular location. It is, I have had to close the blinds today because the sun is streaming and I can see just out of that window here in Bangor um, the Snowdonia Mountains which have a beautiful capping of snow at the present time. Um, so come to Bangor University and you are literally, you have the mountains there and you have the sea out of that window just there. You have the, uh, the sea with all the kind of the, the different ecosystems in between from the mountains to the coast we are the best university to study the natural sciences and biology you can possibly imagine. So I hope to see you um, at, at Bangor University. And if you're interested in wetlands or plastics, please get in touch um, when you get here. And I'm sure that I can get you in these labs pretty quickly um, helping out with some of the experiments. Thank you very much.